Hi guys, this is Wilberfast. Uh, I just want to take a moment to make a video about a, a little piece of tech I've been working on recently. Uh, this is essentially a university project. Um, I was asked to uh, write a little uh, test platform for search algorithms and uh, I've added quite a few things of my own volition just so I don't go completely insane. So we've got a, a nice little interface which is zoomable and which you can scroll around in. I've uh, managed to implement a, a Google Maps style zoom to cursor system which I'm quite proud of. It took a little bit of time and effort to get my head around the maths but uh, uh, now that it's working it's, it's actually quite simple believe it or not but you have to have to think of it. Um, so yeah we've got this this little interface which is uh, all, all coded by hand by the way it's, it's not using uh, GL Zoom or uh, anything in OpenGL. I'm actually not that familiar with zooming functions in OpenGL, so I've done all this uh, by hand, which is perhaps not the best idea, but you know, I had fun doing it, so who cares. Um, it's using uh, Java, though, actually. So OpenGL in Java, uh, that's using LWJGL, which is the lightweight Java game library. And uh, it's what Notch uses for Minecraft, so it's got some great credentials. I really like it. It's extremely lightweight. Uh, it doesn't get in the way. Uh, does everything you need except text, unfortunately, which text is a real pain in the ass in OpenGL. Uh, but luckily, there's a little side library uh, which is called Slick Utils, which is a sort of cut-down version of Slick, just with a couple of little bits and bobs for loading images and things like that. So it's uh, it's uh, very handy for text, for example. Uh, so here we have a map of Europe, which has been transformed into a graph where each node is a city, each edge is a connection between two cities where the, uh, the weight is essentially a, uh, an evaluation of the cost, so the duration or the difficulty of travelling from one to the other. And uh, the problem we want to solve is uh, finding the shortest distance between two points, or rather the least costly distance between two points. So as you can see, um, our algorithm, when you click on a new point, it uh, calculates this little yellow line, so it finds out the, the quickest way there. Um, and uh, the, the nodes are colored, of course, start is blue, end is green. Uh, and the nodes that have been explored uh, during the search are colored in purple. As you'll see, this is quite important. Uh, right now, I'm using as you can see up here in the corner, is heuristic set to none. So I'm not using any kind of heuristic. So for all the algorithm knows, um, going from, say, Naples, or rather Budapest, to Hamburg, uh, you might as well travel via Belgrade, even though it's completely in the wrong direction. Uh, in fact, it's going to quite happily go via Belgrade, because it's going to look at this Budapest to Vienna, that's 155, okay, fair enough. It'll take that one first because it's the cheapest. And then it's going to look at this whole thing here, which is going to be about 320 against this one and this one, which is still cheaper, so that's looking good. But now, uh, if we want to add an extra 100 to get to Munich or an extra 200 to get to Berlin, these ones here are starting to look a bit better. And actually, seeing as this one's only 260, I'm going to actually expand this before I start going up this way because, well, you know, it's cheaper. Uh, and that's what A star is when you remove the heuristic. It's essentially just a best first algorithm. So I'll take the cheapest path so far first. And the thing that A star really adds, which is particularly useful for, for pathing, for finding short, uh, short paths, is uh, this heuristic function, which is not only taking into account the, the distance we've traveled, but also the distance that remains to be traveled using a, a sort of guesstimate, uh, which we call heuristic. Um, so here we're using no heuristic, and obviously, you know, for all it knows, going to Genoa is a good way of going to Warsaw. And it'll essentially expand everything out in in layers. So this is the first layer, and this is the second layer, and this is the third layer, and it'll keep going until it finds um, the, the layer with the required node on it, more or less. Uh, obviously, this isn't a particularly good way of doing things. If we have a large graph, it's going to cause problems. Uh, so the solution that, that ASTAR proposes is to use uh, as I mentioned before, uh, to say Paris is not a good way of getting from Brussels to Warsaw because Paris is further from uh, Warsaw than Brussels is. And we know this because we can take a sort of bird's flight distance or Euclid.
Euclidean distance, which is essentially the distance uh, if everything was perfect and I could travel in a straight line. Um, uh, and that's calculated if you've done any geometry uh, in a very simple manner, uh, just taking uh, the difference in x squared plus the difference in y squared and calculating the square root of all that. Uh, so we can get a sort of estimate here of, of how far things are away. Uh, though of course it's not it's not correct. Uh, it's not perfectly correct because you know we need to take rows. We can't go in a straight line. But generally it helps the algorithm examine far fewer uh, nodes. For instance, Copenhagen to Lisbon to Copenhagen uh, with uh, Euclidean distance heuristic only opens up these nodes. Whereas uh, if we turn off the heuristic, uh, we're going to open everything. Whether we're going well actually from Lisbon to Copenhagen, we're only going to open these nodes. But still. Naples is obviously not a good idea, so uh, the Euclidean distance is not too difficult to calculate. Though generally in games, we're going to try and avoid calculating too many square roots. So often when you do distance calculations, you'll forget about the square root. Uh, in this case, uh, we can't use the square distance because if the heuristic overestimates the distance, it, it r ruins the algorithm. So we really have to calculate the square root. Uh, for this reason, in a way, uh, we use the Manhattan distance sometimes. Manhattan distance is just the difference in uh, in uh, x plus the distance in, in y. So it's quite simple to calculate. It's not as accurate as a, a true Euclidean bird's flight uh, distance, but it's good enough. And as you can see, we're opening very few uh, nodes, except uh, Warsaw to Madrid and back again. Not so good. Euclidean, maybe we'll get a better result. Actually, we get a worse result with Euclidean distance, which is quite interesting. So, uh, depending on the heuristic, depending on the graph, we can get quite different results. Uh, quite surprised that uh, that performs so badly, though. So you can see it depends quite a lot on the topology. Here we've ignored Warsaw, we've ignored Paris, Bern, Genoa. We've gone pretty straight through the middle of Europe, examining all these nodes here. Um, so how does this apply to games? Uh, generally, in, in games, you'll have a grid. Uh, in 2D games, rather, you'll have a grid. In 3D games, you'll have a mesh, which is sort of the same thing. It can still be reduced to a graph, very much like this one. Though, uh, in a real-time strategy game, it'll probably look something more like this. This is a labyrinth that's been turned into a graph, so it's a grid where we've got connections here and we can travel between these points. And here, once again, we can calculate the shortest distance between two points, find our way through the maze. In a split second, we find the best path. And obviously, once again, if I turn off the heuristic, it's going to check everything. Whereas if I turn it back on, it's going to check very few nodes, only those that are close to the path it needs to be looking at. Now, interestingly, if I choose a, a node here that's not connected, it's going to have to check everything, because uh, it can't conclude that there's no way of getting to where it needs to be until it's been everywhere. So you can see it's checked the whole graph, and it's concluded that there is no path. But here we're on this little island. And uh, again, we're stuck. Uh, so yeah, um, that's all I have to show for the moment. Uh, once again, you know, I'd very much like to work on an RTS, but I just don't have time at the moment. So I will be putting this up uh, somewhere where you can uh, have a look at it if you want. And uh, if you have any questions, well, I'm I'm happy to address them. Uh, I'm especially, as I said, very pleased with the little uh, zoom to mouse. I'm not sure if I talked about that. It's a sort of Google Maps thing. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all for today. Uh, see you guys next time.